Fair warning, this is going to be a fairly low effort review for me. I'm falling off the Masters of the Air Wagon pretty hard. I'll still give it a fair shake of the stick, but you won't be seeing as many pretty pictures as you normally would. I think we've hit the point in any series' life where the let's give it a try crowd has drifted away, and the only people left watching are the group of people who just want that kind of thing. I recommend watching Shogun to see what a real historical drama is like. Check the links to my Shogun review playlist if you want to see me heap praise on a television show. If you're still watching, there's a pretty good chance you're loving Masters of the Air, so what I'm going to say in this review is going to annoy you. This episode, number 7, I'm giving a 6 out of 10. Why? Because it falls into all of the traps that I pray new shows will avoid. Shorter episodes, tell not show, lack of tension, no time to get to know characters, and time skips. This episode is the second shortest, missing the title of shortest episode by one minute. It did a lot of telling, not showing. A lot of major events happened to people who were not present, and we get to hear our crews get the news. Hey guys, did you hear about the British tunnels? Sometimes it's literally the news. What are you hearing about on the radio? For an episode set inside a prisoner of war camp, we get to see very little of what life was actually like for them. It feels more like a bad camping trip. There's no tension building. It's just, thing happens straight to the consequences of thing happening. Like they're hiding contraband from the guards. The guards find it. There's no punishment. Then they immediately set out to recreate the contraband from scavenge parts. There's no sneaking parts past a checkpoint or anything else that builds any kind of tension. That may well be how it happened, but it makes for a boring TV show. It feels more like the TV show ran out of screen time to fit it in. There seems to be an issue with the audio mix, because Austin Butler's mumbles don't come through very clearly at all. I always have to watch this show with the subtitles on. And I'm not a zoomer. I can understand if I was having issues due to the roar of an airplane engine or bombs dropping. But it's almost silent and I can't hear Fade Routher talk. If you like it, best of luck to you. Leave a comment, click the thumbs down and tell YouTube don't show me any more of this because I can't see it changing in the next two episodes. On to the spoilers. Quinn and Bailey have made it back after being shot down and travelling with the underground and the scene is so anticlimactic. It felt like they'd just been on annual leave for a fortnight. The only thing I got out of their entire return was that they won't be sent back to the front lines because there's a possibility that if they are captured they could identify underground personnel and assets. Personally, I would have liked to see them reach the coast, finally feeling like freedom is within their grasp, or maybe finally setting foot on unoccupied land. How about showing them actually navigating a German checkpoint like was teased three episodes ago? Just wasted potential that is left up to the audience to fill in the gaps. Also, is that the same actor playing Bailey? Rosenthal is on his 25th mission. Man, it seems like only two weeks ago that he first arrived. He flew in his first mission when only one plane came back, then spent an episode in Flak House. Now he's on his final mission. Talk about glossing over his entire tour. At least we touch back on something from a previous episode. Last episode in Flak House, he said he didn't want to take time off. He wanted to keep fighting until the job is done. And this episode, instead of taking up the offer of not flying any more missions, he signs up for a couple more. Because now they've raised it to 30 missions. Current pilots are grandfathered in with a lower requirement. So Rosenthal can't leave these rookie pilots to take over and get his crew killed. Again, the problem is, we know very little about these crewmen. Luckily, they mentioned that the Mustangs are coming into service and are capable of extended flight over Europe. So missions are becoming less dangerous than they previously have been. The Prisoner of War stuff is where I feel the most potential was lost. I was really looking forward to this part, as bad as that sounds. I wanted to see what they were put through. How they had to change from being pilots to being prisoners. How safe did they feel? What rules did they have to follow? 
It feels like there's a lot of required reading to fully grasp the situation, but those who read up on this stuff will get a lot more out of it than us casual observers. It feels a bit like those new Marvel movies where you have to have watched three different eight episode series before you can fully understand the ramifications of what the producers have put on the screen. The bit with the cat eating was an interesting addition, but it does feel like it was added for shock value. We could have been shown them counting the dwindling supplies, asking when the next Red Cross care packages were due, boiling their belts, etc. And then they go and puss out, pun intended, by not showing them discussing the decision to hunt the cat. Who's going to wring its neck? Are they going to tell the rest of the bunkhouse? Nope, they just cut from catching it straight to slurping down its gravy. I'm not saying I want to see them butcher it, but at least show the tension. Again, the tension is lacking. Everything is glossed over like the producers have somewhere to be. A guy was shot and another guy had the dog set upon him. And nothing really ever was mentioned about it afterwards. It's like they put it in the show purely as motivation for Bucky and Buck to discuss how they have to do something. When the first mission returned, they were counting off the planes. 12, 13, 14. And I was thinking after the last mission, when one plane came back, Wow, they got a lot of their boys home in one piece. Then they're all disappointed at how few planes came back. Oops, talk about managing the audience's emotions poorly. In fact, it was such a devastating loss that they gave the day a name, Black Monday. Oops. They actually name dropped The Great Escape. Maybe don't compare yourself to one of the greats because now I want to watch The Great Escape. Are they trying to say that the Great Escape was a stupid move that put everyone else in the camps in greater peril? They just love dropping a Cleveland steamer on the Brits. Now they're asking for the names of every Jewish airman, but we don't have a discussion on who that involves. I know Rosenthal is Jewish, and he signed back up. Was there anyone else? Or more importantly, a Buck or Bucky Jewish? They say this news has reduced their chances of making it through the war. Is that because they're Jewish or just because of the SS wanting to take over the prisoner of war camps? No time, on to the next scene. The entire Crosby storyline I just couldn't care less about. His hard work, his dedication to his comrades, all very noble. But again, 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 it gets glossed over so we can go off and shack up with this floozy. And why do we need to see this? So they can work the special operations group into a future episode? At least we didn't get his Clark Gable impression again. Small mercies, am I right? It's got some good storylines mixed with some dreadfully boring storylines. The problem is they tend to just touch on things and say, that'll do. Like it's a World War II series, so of course we have to have a train with a swastika hauling Jews, presumably to a concentration camp. But we don't actually have any kind of discussion about it. Why isn't Bucky asking Bucky if he's seen anything similar? No, we just have to have it there because it's a requirement and we're not going to discuss it any further. Like I said earlier, Masters of the Year Episode 7 is worthy of a 6 out of 10. Harsh, but fair. It's another turn towards mediocrity. We're supposed to be building towards the peak now, but we're getting bogged down in bad production decisions. I feel like you know if you're going to like this. If you love war stuff, if you're a pilot, If you're in the armed forces, if you have relatives who have served, it's probably going to resonate with you a lot better than it does with me. If you're a civvy like me who wants an entertaining story, maybe learn a bit about the war, see a new side of things as we tend to focus on the army side of the story, it's okay. It'll kill a few hours. But I wouldn't recommend it to anyone as the people who are into this kind of thing would already be aware of it. There just doesn't seem to be that narrative thread throughout the series to really pull you along. It's a series of disjointed stories that never really come together as a cohesive whole. And from what the preview of next week's episodes have shown, I think that issue is going to become even worse. Mega spoilers. Are you ready? No complaints if you don't want to hear this. It seems like we're shifting our focus from the 100th bombing group to the Tuskegee Airmen. So we're going to shift focus to the fighter pilots, at least for the next episode. And we're splitting time with the subaltern and her work with the special operations group. I knew she had to be a spy, but I thought she might have been working for the Germans. 
don't tell me they're going to have the British spying on their allies. Another dig at the poor old Poms. They get bombed almost to oblivion and then their allies make TV shows calling them pricks almost 100 years later. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time and have a good one.